The Bengals have a tough road ahead of them if they want to become the third straight team to be back-to-back -back AFC champs. But Houday Nation seems to like it that way. Talk about a blue-collar team, and no matter who they play, the Bengals always feel like the underdog. We, we know that we're the defending AFC champions, you know, and so there, there's an edge to this team where we're not an underdog to anybody. I never feel like an underdog. <laughs> to start it off, if the Bengals want to make it out of the second round, then they're going to need to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Josh Allen and the Bills. And I think we all know what happened the last time these two teams squared off against each other less than a month ago. But I don't want to focus on the last play that happened in that game and rather everything that occurred in the lead up to it. Because that half quarter of play is most definitely the best reference point for what we're going to be seeing in this game. And in the first drive of the Week 17 game, Joe Burrow brought this team down the field as they scored on a 14-yard pass to Tyler Boyd for a TD. And eventually, after a long 6-minute drive, the Bills would answer back with the field goal from the 7. Now, I know this isn't a lot to go off of, and that anything could have happened in that extra 3 quarters, but it's all we got for how those teams look versus each other. And even if we take that game out of the equation, then I still have the Bengals making out of not only the second round, but out of the entire AFC side. And yes, that means that I believe that the Bengals are also going to beat the Kansas City Chiefs in the AFC Championship game yet again. More on that later. But for now, I want to stay on the topic of the Bills-Bengals game and focus on Josh Allen's playoff struggles, which I don't think gets talked about enough, you know? All I ever hear from the media when they talk about Josh Allen is how great his arm is and how he's going to be a star, or already is one. But never do they bring up the media dollar link's playoff failures. With Allen being 3-3 three and three in the postseason, and you think with that many playoff wins in that little amount of games, he'd seen a Super Bowl at this point. And maybe it's because of how much Allen turns the ball over. Oh, you don't believe me? Well, check this out. Guys had three turnovers versus the Dolphins that led to 18 points the other way. Or the reason Josh Allen and the Bills haven't seen a Super Bowl appearance is because they've appeared to have met their playoff kryptonite. And in two of Josh Allen's three playoff runs so far, that kryptonite seems to be the Kansas City Chiefs. And it's more than fair to say that Patrick Mahomes owns the Buffalo Bills when playoff time rolls around. Now, as for the Chiefs, they aren't even guaranteed to get that far in the playoffs this year. Who the heck am I kidding? The Chiefs are probably going to roll right over the Jaguars, and I say that as a Jaguar enjoyer. I'm rooting for Trevor Lawrence and Doug Peterson. I even made a video talking about how the Jaguars snuck into the playoffs and were going to make some noise. But I'm also realistic. And so while I want Jacksonville to win, if I had to put money on it, I'm 100% betting on the Kansas City Chiefs. Alright now, I want to talk about the inevitable matchup of the Bengals and Chiefs and how that game will go. And if you remember me bringing up the Buffalo Bills kryptonite, which you should have, I deadass mentioned it like a minute and a half ago. I said that the Bills won weakness a matching up against Mahomes and the Chiefs, but that doesn't make them invincible. Everyone has an Achilles heel, and the Chiefs' Achilles is looking like it's going by the name of Joe Burr, who is 3-0 all-time versus KC. And if the Bengals take care of business on Sunday, then he is most definitely looking to make that record 4-0 by the end of the month. And if we flash back to a year ago, that exact matchup took place, and in that game, Joey Burrow had a feast, throwing for two touchdown passes and a beautiful 250 yards through the air. Now, it was not a blowout by any means. In fact, last year's AFC Championship game was so close that it came down to a kicker battle, with Harrison Bucker hitting a 44-yarder to tie the game, sending it to OT. And at the beginning of overtime, the Chiefs got real lucky with the coin flip going their way, and only for Mahomes and the squad to turn it over in three plays. As Mahomes threw an awful deep pass to Tyreek that ended up getting intercepted by Von Bell. And of course, Joey took advantage of this as he pushed the offense down the field with the help of T. Higgins and Joe Mixon. And from there, Mr. Clutch handled business as Evan McPherson hit a 31-yarder to win the game and send Cincy to the Super Bowl. Which is exactly what's going to happen again this year if the two teams do end up meeting in the championship round. And when the Bengals eventually reach the Super Bowl in back-to-back -back years, they aren't 
going to let history repeat itself. Look, they had almost 365 days to prepare for the game that they couldn't finish off. And this time, they might actually close out because they won't be battling a mastermind of a head coach in Sean McVay, who did a great job handling the Bengals in the Super Bowl. That is unless since he matches up against the Niners, who have been cruising all year, especially as of late. I mean, once Brock Purdy got the job, I'm pretty sure the Niners have been undefeated with crazy offensive efficiency. I mean, the guy scores touchdowns, like four of them a game. It's crazy to watch their offense. But even still, I do believe that Zach Taylor will bring the Lombardi to Ohio for the first time in, well, ever? I, I don't know. All right, that's it for the video, but I did want to mention the fact that while the video doesn't seem very believable, almost everyone didn't have the Bengals making it out of the AFC last year. So who knows what the NFL playoffs have in store for us? Okay, deuces.